Hi, welcome to Mondays in the Psalter. I'm Pastor Vandercook. Today we continue looking at Psalm 119, which focuses upon the gift of God's Word and the gift of God's law uh, and how it works in our life. So today we're looking at verses 129 through 136. Your testimonies are wonderful, therefore my soul keeps them. The unfolding of your words gives light. It imparts understanding to the simple. I open my mouth and pant because I long for your commandments. Turn to me and be gracious to me, as is your way with those who love your name. Keep steady my steps according to your promise, and let no iniquity get dominion over me. Redeem me from man's oppression, that I may keep your precepts. Make your face shine upon your servant, and teach me your statutes. My eyes shed streams of tears, because people do not keep your law. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. When we look at the Word of God, the Word of God is what helps us to live as his people. It gives us his law, which shows us how we ought to live as God's people. That's why the psalmist can say, your testimonies are wonderful, therefore my soul keeps them. See, the converted person, the person who has been brought to faith in Christ, wants to live as God's people, wants to live as God's child. And so he's going to look to the word of God to see how it is that he ought to live. And so that's how he, the psalmist can write, the unfolding of your words gives light. It imparts understanding to the simple. Uh, that echoes, of course, much of the book of Proverbs, which we look to to uh, give us wisdom. Uh, how do we find wisdom? What is the source of wisdom? Well, the word of God is our source of wisdom. The word of God is where we turn to to find how it is that we ought to live as his people. We don't look to the world. The world doesn't give us that. But the Word of God does. God's law shows, it, shows us how it is that we ought to live. The psalmist here, you got to love the imagery here. Verse 131, I open my mouth and pant because I long for your commandments. You get the picture, whenever I hear panting, I always think of dogs. Uh, you know, a dog pants for water because he, he's so thirsty. Uh, he can't live without it. But the same could be true of somebody who's exercising. Uh, yesterday, I... I rode my bike 64 miles yesterday morning, uh, and or I'm sorry, Saturday morning. I rode my bike. I was in church yesterday morning. Saturday morning, I rode my bike 64 miles, and at the end of that ride and during parts of that ride, uh, it's hot here in Arkansas. I'm panting. I need water. Uh, thankfully, I usually have a bottle of water with me, and I have plenty of water to drink, but uh, you get to the point where you need that nourishment, uh, and that's how it is with God's law, with his commandments. We want to hear what God's word has to say. We want to hear how it is that we should live as God's people. Uh, and so we long for that. Uh, we long for that because we are his people, because we've been redeemed. We've been bought back from sin, death, and the devil. Uh, and therefore, we want to live as God's people. And so then the psalmist here also prays that God would keep his steps steady according to his promise. Let no iniquity get dominion over me. That's a big word. Uh, dominion means, uh, you know, lordship, power, control over me. Don't let my sins control me. Rather, let me be controlled by your word. That's what we're praying for in this commandment. Uh, let me, as one who is your child, live as your, as your child. Uh, don't let sin have control over me. Rather, let me look to your commandments. Now, here you hear some echoes now as we get toward the end of this. Verse 135, uh, make your face shine upon your servant and teach me your statutes. You know, it really kind of echoes the ironic benediction that we find in Numbers that we hear at the end of the divine service each week. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. We ask that the Lord's face be turned toward us. When the Lord's face is turned toward us, it means that he is uh, he's being gracious to us. He's giving us his gifts. 
what we don't want is we don't want the Lord's face to be turned away from us. Uh, and so we pray along with the psalmist here that his face would shine upon us, that his grace would come to us. Now, as this psalm wraps up, or this section of this psalm, uh, you see verse 136, my eyes shed streams of tears because people do not keep your law. We just, we as God's people, do not want people to be judged. We don't want people to perish. Uh, we don't want them to suffer the condemnation for their sin. We want the people of this world that are outside of the church, we want them to be saved. We want them to come to the knowledge of the truth. And so you see in the psalmist here a genuine concern for people who are outside of God's people. My eyes shed streams of tears because people do not keep your law. We as God's people, we want uh, those who are outside of Christianity, even those who are inside of Christianity and who perhaps are uh, involved in some sort of sinful living, uh, who is, well, everybody. We shed tears because we want them not to live that way. We want them to live as God's people. We want all people to come to the knowledge of the truth. God says, uh, Paul writes in uh, 2 Timothy, uh, you know, he wants all men to be saved. That's what God wants. He desires all men to be saved, and we as God's people ought to desire that same thing. God be with you this week, and we'll see you hopefully next week on Mondays in the Psalter.